You're on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is The Triage Room. The Triage Room is a podcast that encourages and empowers listeners to overcome obstacles of pain. Pain is the physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. When we describe the type of pain we're having, we're really describing the symptoms. Once we identify the symptoms, then we can deal with the root. Welcome to The Triage Room. You're now on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is the triage room. Today's topic, time to change your lens. The World Book Dictionary says that change is to make different, alter, modify. Marion Webster defines lens as a clear curved piece of material as glass used to bend the rays of light to form an image, a clear part of the eye behind the pupil, an iris that focuses rays of light on the retina to form clear images. Sometimes the hard things we face in life are meant to be teachable moments to learn from and put our trust in God. Yet instead, because of the lack of faith when faced with trials, attack, and disappointment, one may see life through a blurred lens as a victim instead of through a clear lens as a victor. Those that are broken see through the lens of hurt. Those that are toxic see through the lens of victim. Those that are loved and understand what love is, see through the lens of love. Sometimes we may resist change. And so how we see life can be, is molded and shaped around our experiences. And if we're broken and we haven't dealt with that brokenness, then the lens that we see through is a lens of hurt. Everything around us, how we see the world is through a lens of hurt because of the unresolved area in our lives of brokenness and not being whole and those things left unattended to. And when one has held on to bitterness, one has held on to anger, resentment, all these different things are bottled up. You know, they see the lens of victim. Everything that happens, they're the victim of whatever that thing is. And so they're very toxic, not dealing with the unresolved issues within contributes to the lens you see through and even if you know you're one who understands what love is you understand it you know what it is you can identify with it then the way you see life is through the lens of love because you have a clear understanding of what love is and what it looks like now what happens a lot of times in life when you've been broken and you have not healed you have not addressed those areas or even one who has not dealt with the unresolved issues that are contributing to being toxic when life happens you deal with it different so one who is broken and seeing only through the lens of hurt you may not embrace the change of seeing things different you may not embrace change when it knocks at your door so when when life happens everything is surrounded by the hurt you've been through, everything is, sur- is surrounded by your perception of how you see. Because how you see has to do with how you think. And how you think has to do with what you've been exposed to. So if you've been exposed to a lot of things that contribute to your brokenness and is left unresolved, you're walking around broken and you haven't, you know, went through your healing process, haven't dealt with certain things, then the way you see life is going to be through one that's hurt. The way you speak, when things happen, you're you're really sharing what's in your heart. You're sharing your present state because out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what's in your heart is coming out. So not dealing with the brokenness contributes to your perception, contributes to the, to the lens you see through. Not dealing with the bitterness, not dealing with the anger contributes to the lens you see through so if you're always you know the victim of a situation there's some unresolved issues that need to be dealt with and sometimes in life you know some people embrace change better than others and when we decide that we want to see better we want to see things clearer we want to see things for the way that they are and not for the way we want them to be you know that is a positive thing because now we're preparing ourselves to see the way we should see and not based on the circumstance or the situation we may have experienced. Here's my moment of transparency. I resisted change for a while and it was because of, that was my way of 
self-preservation because of fear. Fear, which we know comes to paralyze. You know, fear will grip you and it'll paralyze you. But what happened with myself is I resisted change because after dealing with circumstance after circumstance and painful situation back to back, one thing after the next, the safe place for me during that time was to keep things the same. That way I could make sure nothing could could enter into to cause me pain to hurt me. And so to to know what to expect. Because it just seemed like every time you looked up, things were forever changing. And because of that, I stayed in a space of self-preservation and seeing through the lens of one that's been hurt. And thinking to myself that if I continue to do things a certain way and and just resist the change that, that was there to really help and bless me, that I will be able to control the outcome of a situation. When really, I learned that that is a hindrance to resist change was a hindrance because even whatever the change is bringing, if you, if you look at it and embrace it, it's better to embrace it head on at the beginning because all it's there to do is to help you grow. Change helps you grow. Now I'm not talking about changing that comes to knock on your door and change you, changing you from being who God designed you to be and changing you and having you go down a path you shouldn't be going on. I'm not talking about negative, the negative impact of it, what it comes to do, you know, to take you away from where you're supposed to be. I'm talking about that change that comes that even though it could be a negative knocking on the door that you do not really um, like and it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. There is still something in that because how you deal with it you know, stretches you beyond your faith can be activated in it. And you get to see the glory of the Lord upon your life. You get to see God move on your behalf. You get to see sometimes we don't even understand how, or or we don't understand what God has done in us or what's there to help us propel forward until we're placed in a situation. We're placed with circumstances. We're placed with change that comes that we didn't even invite. That we didn't really care for. We don't we don't want to have any parts of it. However, if it was intended for us to remain the same and never grow, then when we come and we're infants, could you imagine being an infant and now being the age that you are? You're still eight pounds or you're still nine pounds and you're still that size. You're still codependent on someone else to feed you. You're still codependent in some areas. And when it comes to to change, that is a part of life. You go from infancy, there's a toddler, there's a young child, now you're going to be a teenager, then there's a young adult, now you're a full grown adult. Each phase of life, so each stage as you're growing, shows you there's different phases in life. Different phases in life that require different things. To change our lens, change the way that we see life, change the way we see in the circumstance that we really may not care for at that time. But what is it? that we need out of it to help us to grow. Because sometimes the things that we really don't like to leave a bad taste, but really that thing there can contribute to a growth that if we didn't experience it, then that growth part of our life wouldn't have happened. Some things cause you to multitask because, okay, the change is, I'm gonna use an example like this. Let's say, you know, you're, you're, you have a team of people, it's four of you or five of you, and out of the five of you, Three walk away and there's two left. So now the two have to do what five would normally do. It's a negative impact on the team, but the two that now have to do what the five used to do. Now there's some new skill sets put in place. There's some stretching that's there to show you, wait a minute, you do have the capacity to get it done. Where you once thought maybe you couldn't, you just had to rearrange some things. Some things had to be stretched. Some things had to be restructured but now you can see it got done and sometimes when those changes come about that we resist we're hindering our opportunity for growth and development it may not feel good at the time however it's for our good how can you heal if you don't deal with the brokenness you'll always see through the lens of hurt when you're broken you'll always see through the lens of victim when you're toxic 
unresolved issues. So we never deal with the things that are inside the, the anger, the bitterness, the resentment. If that's left unresolved, then we will see through a lens of victim in every situation in life. And we, we have to change the way we see if we want better. It all starts with how do you see life? How do you see your situation? How do you see your circumstance? And if we change the way we see it, change our perception of a thing, then we'll begin to see how things, how we embrace it a little bit different. And it'll contribute to some growth that's necessary in that time. The fear of, you know, what's going to happen if you embrace this change. That's how people can get stuck in a, in a certain area in life because wanting things to remain the same and once upon a time that was me wanting things to remain just like this because i know what to expect when really we understand that you know jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he never changes so we embrace him and you know understanding that along our journey of change the situations and circumstances we're presented with he's right there he never changes but we have we go through our situations and our circumstances that we face to help us grow, to help us get to a place. And sometimes the things that we think are so negative are really there to help us. God will use that thing to turn something around, to pull things out of us that we didn't even know were there. And if we look at it with the right lens, the change that is knocking on the door is there to help us change our lens. It is there to help us change the way we see a thing. It may look negative at the time, but when you allow yourself to go through the process and get on the other side of it, then that's when we can see that thing was there to work for my good. I didn't like the process, but it was there for my good. And to change the perception of a thing, to change your mindset will help change how you see. You won't, you're no longer, you know, once you deal with the brokenness, you won't see through the lens of hurt. And when you get a clear understanding of what it is to be whole, you won't see through the lens of hurt and actually become whole. Cast your cares into the Lord. Give it all over to him and go through your process of healing. Deal with the anger. Deal with the bitterness. Deal with the unresolved issues so that you're not toxic around every person you come around. Because what's coming out of your mouth, what comes out of our mouth reveals. What comes out of the heart, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when we speak, it is showing what's deep down in the heart. Unresolved issues contribute to seeing through the lens of victim. And if we take the time to embrace the change, the change that comes to help us see life better, to help us see the way we should see properly, and embrace whatever that is that's there to help us get to the next step, the next place in life so that we don't get stuck in a certain place. That's how life can go on and you remain as if it was a certain period, a certain time in life. And in that part of life, no, things have continued to move on. Change is the inevitable. But there's some that just totally resist it. Totally. Now, when COVID-19, when, when this presented itself, that was a big change worldwide. And a lot of adjustments had to be done. Well, people once, you know, did things a certain way. Now, teleworking became a thing of acceptance. Teleworking had to be put in place to continue to get a process done a different way. Virtual learning. How do we get this done a different way? Changing the lens to see. Here's a situation that presented itself that we didn't ask for, but it's here. But how do we continue to move forward and make sure we're productive to resist that change? To say, no, we're going to continue or things being the same way like they were before to resist that change. No, change is a part of growth and it's going to be challenged within that. But when we see life through the lens of love, because we've taken the time to deal with the brokenness, we've taken the time to deal with the, the pain, the anger, the, the resentment, the bitterness, all of that. When we've taken the time to deal with the unresolved issues and we begin to embrace the change. Growth is right there. Growth is in the process and get a true definition and understanding and clear understanding of what love is. Then we can walk in love. Then we can operate in love and then we can see through the lens of love. But we must first deal with the things that are going on to keep us from seeing clearly. Change is all a part of life. How will we 
embrace the change that has presented itself. How will we embrace the change that will present itself? Because change is going to always knock at our door. The only thing that doesn't change is Jesus. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. We have change that knocks at our door. And that's what happened with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They did not want to embrace change. They wanted things to remain just the way that they were. And Jesus came on the scene and they did not like what he came with. And just like us, when we look at our lives, there'll be situations where we're the change. And there'll be others that don't like what we come with because we're the change. And they'll resist what we bring to the table. But we have to change our lens. And not go into those situations as if we're a victim. And know that, hey, when you know who you are and you know your assignment in a thing, everybody's not going to embrace. You're not going to always be welcomed. But if we change our perception, change our lens that we're seeing through and understand, you know, understand that if those that you are in the presence of don't receive you, that's not for you to internalize. You do what it is you know you've come to do, but don't take it personal. If we change our lens from seeing as if, The change has presented itself as a negative thing. We'll move forward and not get stuck. Sometimes change will be uncomfortable. You know, it presents itself. It's not going to always be spoof selling. But we have to change how we see change within itself when it knocks at the door. And if we continue to resist the change, then what we're saying is, I resist the growth. I resist the opportunity to grow. That's what we're saying when change knocks at the door and we choose not to answer. I'm not talking about something that comes to change your walk with God. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those circumstances that we have no control over, but they keep knocking. Things that we have no control over, but they keep knocking. Things that come, they may look negative, but if we embrace it, like the example of the five people, now narrow it down to two. Two people doing the job of five. However, that stretching during that time could show the two what they never knew they could do until faced with the opportunity to have to do it. And that's what happens with change. Those things that come contribute to letting us see ourselves and things that we're faced with a different way. It's time to see things different. No more seeing it from a hurt place or a broken place. No more seeing it from a toxic place because of unresolved issues. Deal with those issues. Deal with those things. No more seeing it from a victim, but changing our lens to see through one that is healed, changing our lens to see as one that is, that is love and loved and changing our lens to see that even though this thing that may knock at my door, I did not ask for it. I did not welcome. But one thing I know that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And if this has knocked at my door, the Lord knew it was coming. If this has knocked at my door, I trust the Lord to get me through it. If this has knocked at my door, I trust the Lord that I'm going to give this over to him and ask him to help me navigate through this thing called change. And as I go through the change, as I embrace this change, this shall contribute to my lens being changed. It shall contribute to how I see different in a better way, in a healthier way. Sometimes it takes certain things to let us see. What's been there inside of us the entire time. The growth that is necessary to get to the next phase, the next stage in life consists of change. If you have been seeing life through a blurred lens of brokenness, discouragement, or victim, I encourage you today to change your lens. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to say thank you. I thank you for life, health, and strength. Father, I ask you right now, Lord, that those that are resisting change, God, that, Lord, this is a time for them to embrace the change that has presented itself, that may, Lord, they begin to see differently now, God, that the change that comes to them, Lord, that those that have fear, I cast out all matters of fear, those that have been really pondering on whether or not they should embrace this change that now today presents an opportunity for them to see how change can be beneficial. If Lord, they cast their cares to you, if they trust in you, Lord, and not look at it, God, as it's just them going through. The Lord, whatever is there that is broken, then now the broken places be healed. Whatever that is there that is unresolved, the anger, the bitterness, that those things now, God, get dealt with. That cast out all matters of bitterness and, and anger in the name of Jesus. Those things, Father, that have kept 
people in a place called stuck that now they come out of an, an old way of thinking they come out of a stuck place and begin to embrace the change God that has presented itself to now allow them to see the way you intended for them to see to change their perception of a thing, to see it the right way, to see it in truth and not be blinded by the thing, what it is, Father, that you're having presented itself to help them get to another place in life. So God, I thank you for this opportunity to help speak into the lives of others, speak into those lives of those that are tuning in, Lord, to understand that change is going to present itself, but it's how we embrace it that will contribute to our growth, that will contribute to our healing that will contribute to us getting to the next place of where we need to be. May every broken place now be made whole. May the places that have once lacked love now be filled with love. May the lenses that once were lenses of victim, were lenses of hurt now be lenses of, of wholeness, now be lenses of truth in the name of Jesus as we understand more about the benefits of change and allowing those things to contribute to us changing our lens. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You all be blessed. Thank you for joining me on deck in the triage room. To get the music you hear in this podcast or to stay connected, visit my website, UrsulaCamille.com. That's U-R-S-E-L-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-E.com. Sign up on my email list, get merch and more. Have an area of pain you want to address in the triage room? Send your email to thetriageroom at gmail.com. I'm your host, Ursula Camille, signing off. Be blessed. One touch in your life change. Did you know that Jesus reigns? One touch in your life change.